following on from the massive success of Thunderbirds, legendary TV producer Jerry Anderson's next project was Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons, which first aired on British television in 1967. Anderson was well known by this point for his TV programs that were filmed using marionette puppetry combined with scale model special effects, and he dubbed this style Super Marionation. It was always going to be difficult to top the superb Thunderbirds TV series, but Captain Scarlet put up a tremendous effort, and it has remained one of Jerry Anderson's most popular properties for the last 55 years. The series follows the exploits of Captain Scarlet, the most daring agent of the World Security Organization, Spectrum. After a tragic mission to Mars where Spectrum destroys an alien city, the invisible beings known as the Mysterons declare war on Earth. Captain Scarlet. S-I-G. S-I-G? Spectrum is green. It means everything is fine. In the first episode, Captain Scarlet is killed on a mission, and then reconstructed by the Mysterons using their unique ability to recreate the exact likeness of an object or person. An ability known as Retro Metabolism. Later in the episode, the possessed Captain Scarlet gets into a shootout with Captain Blue, and Scarlet ends up falling from the top of the London car view, seemingly to his death. Miraculously, Captain Scarlet survives the fall, and when he recovers, he is no longer under Mr. On control, but he still possesses the ability of retro metabolism, making him indestructible, and he becomes Spectrum's greatest weapon in the fight against the Mr. Ons. It would seem that this Captain Scarlet is now indestructible. In terms of visual aesthetic, Captain Scarlet was a departure from the Super Marination programs that had come before, where the puppets were all caricatures. The puppet cast of Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons were much more realistic in proportions and appearance, and this played well into the more mature, darker tone of the program. One of you will be under our control. Unlike previous Jerry Anderson productions, many characters are killed off in this series, in quite violent fashion, with Captain Scarlet also dying at the end of several episodes. Are you alright? I will be, Captain. I will be. Only to be reincarnated the following week thanks to his retro metabolism ability. In fact, Captain Scarlet dies so many times that if they ever made a live action movie, you'd have to cast Sean Bean in the lead role. <laughs> Captain Scarlet ran for just one season of 32 exciting episodes, yet it was a critical and merchandising success, both in its time and in subsequent decades. And when the show enjoyed high profile reruns on British television in the early 90s, it spawned a wide range of Captain Scarlet toys, including an assortment of three and three quarter inch scaled action figures and vehicles created by the company Vivid Imaginations. SIG. Come with me, toy fans. When the British Broadcasting Corporation acquired the rights to Captain Scarlet, it launched a UK wide rerun of the series in October 1993 and it was a huge success once again, with over 4 million people tuning in to the first episode. And to coincide with the series' first run on BBC Two, Vivid Imaginations released a plethora of Captain Scarlet toys. This line featured a huge assortment of die-cast metal mini vehicles and one six-scale dolls. But in this video, we'll solely be looking at the three and three-quarter inch action figure line, and not the other toys in the range. The initial wave of figures featured six core characters, including Captain Scarlet, Captain Blue, Colonel White, Lieutenant Green, Captain Black, and Destiny Angel. Each figure was sold on a blister card that featured colourful artwork, and they were each packed in with some very rudimentary looking accessories. While the figures have been manufactured from a good quality plastic, their design and construction is somewhat crude. Each figure features nine points of articulation, including the knees, hips, elbows, shoulders, and neck. While the sculpts on the male figures are adequate, I do feel sorry for Destiny Angel, who is a beautiful character in the television show, but somehow Vivid Imaginations made her look like a rugby player. I mean, her shoulders are so big, she looks like she could beat any of the male characters in an arm wrestling contest. All is forgiven though when you position her in the cockpit of the Angel Interceptor, which was released by Vivid in 1994. In the television series, the Angel Interceptors are Spectrum's first line of aerial defence, and they are flown by the Angels, a group of five female fighter pilots. Destiny, Harmony, Symphony, Rhapsody, and Melody. Unfortunately, Vivid only ever created two of the pilots in action figure form, with Destiny being released in the first wave, and the much harder to find Harmony being released in the second. The Angel Interceptors are launched from Spectrum's cloud base, which is a type of aircraft carrier that floats in the sky. 
The Avengers Helicarrier predates Cloudbase by two years, and I can't help but think that the designers may have been inspired by this Marvel Comics creation. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. Although the Angel Interceptor is a well-made toy that looks quite similar to its on-screen counterpart, I imagine some children would have been disappointed by this toy's lack of playability. To help articulate what I mean, I decided to compare the Vivid Imagination's Angel Interceptor to the Kenner Star Wars X-Wing that was released 15 years earlier. Both fighters have a retractable front landing gear, they both have opening cockpit canopies, and they both feature battery-powered sound effects. While the engine sound made by the Angel Interceptor is much better than the annoying drone emitting from the X-Wing, and this toy also features laser cannon sound effects, the X-Wing also boasts a light-up feature that is absent from the Angel Interceptor. But the real smoking gun here is the ability to move the X-Foils on the Kenner toy at the push of a button, and this was a feature that I played with constantly when I was a child. What other play feature do we get with the Angel Interceptor? A seatbelt. I do really enjoy the overall aesthetic of the Vivid Imagination's Angel Interceptor, but when compared to similar toys that I've handled in the past, the Interceptor is not much more than the shell of a vehicle, and I feel Vivid could have put a bit more effort into it, like including an injector seat or something cool like that. This certainly isn't a bad toy, and it can pull double duty as a nondescript Star Wars vehicle for your Kenner figures. I just wish it had a little bit more going on in the play department. We're losing control! Come! Captain Scarlet's still in there! He'll never make it. He'll never make it. He'll never make it. Come on, Nigel, school. By saving tokens from special packs of Kellogg's Rice Krispies, you can get free Captain Scarlet figures. This is the voice of the Mr. Ons. You're right, Nigel. So the figures aren't much to ride home about, and the Angel Interceptor is a bit lacking. So thank the Martians that the next toy in the range makes up for all these shortcomings. The Spectrum Pursuit Vehicle, or SPV for short, is a type of armoured personnel carrier that seats up to four Spectrum agents. The SPV is the showstopper of this line, and I am eternally grateful to Evander from Paris for donating this toy to the channel. In the Captain Scarlet television series, the SPVs are hidden in all sorts of different locations around the globe and it was one of my favourite parts of each episode, seeing where the next SPV would emerge from. A unique aspect of the SPV is that the entire crew sit in backwards facing seats. It must be tricky facing backwards and driving by TV monitor. Ah, uh, you get used to it. The idea of these backwards facing seats was to protect the occupants in the event of a crash, something that happened all too often in the world of Captain Scarlet. <laughs> While I think these rearward seats were a good idea, show producer Jerry Anderson always regretted this design decision. As we started to script the series, we began to realise that the audience was going to say, why are these people facing backwards? Remaining faithful to this concept, the Spectrum Pursuit vehicle produced by Vivid features four rear-facing seats, the first two of which are in the driver's cockpit that is accessible via an opening top hatch. The other crew positions are ejector seats which are operated via a lever on the top of the vehicle. All four seats include working seat belts and the driver's position includes a sticker that represents the television monitor they use when steering the vehicle. The SPV is a 10-wheeled attack craft that also features a pair of all-terrain tracks that are stowed in an angled position at the rear of the vehicle until they are deployed by the driver when needing to negotiate difficult terrain. Finally, we have the SPV's main weapon system, a working laser cannon. There is a push button on the side of the vehicle that has two trigger pressures. The first raises a hatch to expose the cannon, and when the second pressure is reached, it launches a rocket. And this toy packs quite the punch. Between the ejector seats and the spring-loaded missile, this toy is a ton of fun, and I can't stop playing with it. I also adore the SPV's overall design. It looks tactical and awesome, and if you're planning on collecting this line, the Spectrum Pursuit vehicle makes for the perfect centrepiece to your Captain Scarlet toy collection. Before this toy range ended, Vivid Imaginations did add a few more figures to the roster, and one that I would like to add to my collection is the Captain Scarlet in Spectrum astronaut suit. But in my mind, this will forever remain an incomplete toy line, because Vivid never produced the Spectrum car in the three and three quarter inch scale.
This fire engine red vehicle is just as iconic as the show's titular hero, and its omission here is eyebrow raising. Could you imagine if Kenner produced the Millennium Falcon and the X-Wing for the Star Wars line, but failed to offer us the land speeder? There would be outrage from the fan base, and I'm certainly frustrated that I'll never be able to add the Spectrum car to my three and three quarter inch scaled collection. Although Vivid's range of Captain Scarlet action figures and vehicles didn't exactly break new ground, and I certainly don't consider them must have toys. If you are a devoted Captain Scarlet fan, then I do recommend picking them up. And that should be fairly easy to do since most of these items are still readily available on the secondary market at quite reasonable prices, except for a few of the harder to find second wave of figures. Despite this toy line's flaws, as a proud Englishman, I'm just pleased these classic British toys even exist. Because when the Palatoy company closed for business in 1985, many of us thought it would be the end of homegrown British action figure lines, but we witnessed quite the renaissance in the 90s, with a wide variety of Jerry Anderson themed toys being released. And who is carrying the torch for British action figures today? That's easy, it's character options and their extensive range of Doctor Who action figures. And this is a line I definitely want to talk about one day, but I'm getting off topic. Captain Scarlet is an icon of the British pop culture landscape, and if you're a fan of this franchise and an action figure collector, then Vivid's range of toys from the 1990s should be right on your spectrum. So thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to check out some other Jerry Anderson videos, we've got a review here of the Tracy Island playset from Matchbox. I'm Tony from Analog Toys, and I'll see you in the next video. SIG.